It's always moments I have lived or people that are important to me. I think creation must always come from something very personal and honest. I believe if you speak about something that matters to you and that you know, it will speak to others. I recall my mother having lots of fragrance bottles as objects of decoration. Back in the days, fragrance bottles were pieces of art with great designers behind them. I wanted to find that again. I wanted the bottle to leave the bathroom and to find its place in the living room or the atelier of the artist. I worked with Jade Lombard. I have always loved artists like Brancusi or design from the second half of the 20th century. It's these inspirations that created these bottles and every detail has a link to the story of the fragrances. Welcome back, everybody. Well, I may have chosen possibly the worst time <laughs> to film this video because there are power tools and kids crying and all sorts of noises, but I have the mic as close to my voice box as possible. So hopefully I'll be able to drown out some of that background noise. Anyway, welcome back. Today, I'm really, really excited to talk to you about a house that I have been sampling on and off for several months now. I bought some of these samples last year and yeah I've just spent I guess several months sort of sampling them and, and getting a feel for them and today I get to talk about them. I also did reach out to the brand uh, to get some more information because their website though it is very beautiful the stories on the website are kind of abstract so it was hard to get a factual piece of information about where the brand came from, the story behind the brand owners. And so I decided to get in contact with them and ask them some questions. They very, very generously then offered to set up a call between me and one of the founders. And though we tried very hard, we just couldn't coordinate our schedules, which is pretty typical when you're on opposite sides of the world. So I decided to simply send through some questions on email and they very, very kindly sent back basically a Word document answering all the questions and giving me some more background. So I'm really grateful for that. So if you've clicked on this video, then you'll obviously already be aware that the brand I'm referring to is Orme Paris. And the opening of this video included some personal reflections from one of the founders, Baptiste Bouygues. And that was the only thing I didn't ask them about was the pronunciation of names. So I do apologize, Baptiste, if I have butchered your name. I, I truly hope I haven't. I did, I did try and Google. <laughs> so Orme Paris is a French perfume brand and it was founded by mother and son duo Marie-Lise Jonac and Baptiste Bouygues. Baptiste was actually raised in Thailand for the first few years of his life and then was relocated to the French countryside. He recalls developing a love for what he refers to as know-how and I'm presuming in translation that perhaps might mean an appreciation for artisan craftsmanship uh, because he used to watch his grandfather carve wood as a child and then as a young adult he started working for a French luxury maison in Asia before going on to work for larger brands such as Louis Vuitton and Givenchy in Europe. So he was always interested in craftsmanship and in art. And so he decided to create his own brand, Orme, where he would have control over representing these values at the center of the brand. His mother, Marie-Lise was herself raised in a small village outside of Paris in France. And then after finishing school, she did some traveling and found herself living on the island of Koh Samui in Thailand. 
which is a place very fond to my heart because I used to holiday there fairly regularly myself. She lived there for eight years running a scuba diving school, which is another activity that I'm also very fond of. At the beginning of the 90s, Marie Lise returned to France and started to rise through the ranks of different perfume houses and very quickly became a director of olfactive creation. Her work has contributed to several Fifi Awards and today she is the co founder of Orme Paris. So the interesting thing about Orme Paris is that it's a natural perfume brand. Baptiste was very passionate about creating a line of fragrances that used naturals to convey a story because he truly feels that naturals have a very unique way of evoking emotion in people and that they touch your soul in a way that synthetics can't. It took them two years to source the ingredients that they were happy with and to develop Develop the know-how to manipulate them in a way that they were happy with to create these fragrances. So there are eight fragrances I believe. I'm sure that I'm pretty sure that there's still only eight. Hopefully they haven't released any new ones since I got this sample set because I have been sitting on them for a while. And the way I approached sampling this house was I didn't really know anything about them when I got the samples. I saw the bottles on a perfumery website and thought that they looked really intriguing. And so I decided that I would get the samples and then I would try them blind, put down some thoughts, and then later on I can go back and read about them. So what I'll do is I'll introduce the fragrances one by one and then I will share with you the background that Baptiste provided to me about each of the, these fragrances and share with you the notes that I wrote down after the first few times of wearing them without reading up on them. And then I'll share with you the notes. So you'll get the whole spectrum, everything from the creator's intent to my impressions to what it actually contains. Okay, so the first one is 28 degrees. I have this sprayed on a paper strip. This is actually, the last time I sprayed this strip was a few weeks ago and I can still smell it. So it's doing pretty well. So 28 degrees, Baptiste writes, I had the idea of 28 degrees in the South of France. Sometimes when you walk through the South of France, you can just smell jasmine or orange blossom. I remember walking with a friend and she had Manoi in her hair and I smelled those beautiful white flowers at the same time. And that is what 28 degrees is all about. It's about summer. I really like his descriptions of all the stories behind these fragrances because not only are they based on a personal experience, but they're a very real experience that I can relate to. Even if I haven't smelled those specific smells, I can understand the inception for the fragrance. Whereas I know sometimes when you, you reach out to brands and you ask for a bit of background on a particular fragrance or, or something, um, you get something that's very abstract and it's very hard to make that link and and that's there's nothing wrong with that it's just that I mean I know some people just think more artistically than I do but I, I do appreciate the fact that he has made he's kept it quite simple and and I think there's something really touching and almost and, and kind of innocent as well about that so so what I said about this one was that it opens slightly powdery. And I said that I thought I got iris on the top with either orange blossom or neroli and then some vanilla. And I definitely do get the orange blossom. It's a very sweet orange blossom because there is that vanilla in there as well. And I, yeah, it does, it does have a powdery kind of fluffy feel to it for, for me. And I think that's why I thought maybe I was getting a bit of iris, but there doesn't appear to be any, any iris in here. So that's just my imperfect nose talking to you there. It dries down quite sweet and a little bit musky on me. And again, there's no mention of musk in this fragrance, but that's sort of just how it behaves. It's very fluffy and light and airy, but I feel like there is a little bit of a denseness to it as well, probably from the orange blossom perhaps, because I know orange blossom can have that effect. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very 
beautiful, very French smelling perfume. Okay, so the notes are, in the top there's mandarin, orange, lemon, pepper tree and bergamot. In the mid you have orange blossom, tuberose, rose and jasmine sandback. And in the base, and this is where it gets interesting, in the base is vanilla, sandalwood and immortelle. Mind blown, uh, mind blown. I usually hate immortelle. I'm not sure if I'm necessarily getting the immortelle though, but maybe I am. It's certainly not the most dominant thing in this fragrance, but I like it. I really, really like it. I think if it was slightly less sweeter, it would be, probably be my favorite from the line because I do love orange blossom, but it is, it is quite sweet. And I think it's probably a bit too sweet for me just a tad, but it's beautiful. All right, so the next one is Livre Bleu. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna have to put this on. I actually have this one on my hand that I sprayed on a couple of hours ago because I like this one. Okay, so let me just relay to you Baptiste's creative inspiration for this one. Livre Bleu, I know I'm not saying that right, is a very narcotic scent. It is the scent of the jungle. I used to work in the mines of South America. Oh, another thing we have in common. Not, I didn't work in the mines in South America, but I have worked in mines. Livre Bleu is really the idea of the craziness that can be born in the jungle. There is something animalistic and addictive to it with the rum, the dark vanilla and the cacao. But there are also touches of color, like a painting from Le Dunier Rosseau with iris and lily. I think maybe this might be my favorite. Spoiler alert, what did I write? I wrote coffee in the top, question mark, with some aromatics, but only a hint. I get more bitter coffee slash chocolate. After a while, the bitterness melts into a sweet spiciness that smells boozy. However, I don't find it sticky. It's dry and a little bit woody and in the dry down becomes more floral with light, delicate florals that to me lean somewhat herbal, but not green. After a couple of hours, I get more dry woods and spice and a hint of vanilla. Wow, I really wrote some thoughts there. So yeah, I think I still agree with all of that. On my hand at the moment, I'm definitely getting more woody nuances from it. Um, there's definitely that hint of spice, really, really tiny hint of booziness and it's soft, you know, there's a softness to it. So I'm attributing that to florals as I usually do, rightly or wrongly. I don't think I necessarily would have picked out iris and lily, but it is very interesting. It does smell quite chocolatey to me. On the strip where I've just sprayed it, it does smell very rummy. And I know, I think I started reading some comments on Fragrantica a few weeks ago about this and and I noticed quite a few people were saying that they don't get the cacao note in here. I was getting something chocolatey from it. And I was also picking up on that dryness as well, which makes sense to me because if it's a cacao note, I, in my mind, I think of dry, powdery, maybe a little bit bitter, depending on the cacao. But yeah, this is, this is really, really lovely. I like it a lot. I think it's completely unisex. I'm particularly enjoying it at the moment because it's winter here and so it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, this is lovely. All right, and the notes are in the top, there is rum, mandarin, orange, and lily. In the mid, you have iris and violet. So I guess if there's violet there, that could also be attributing to some of that light florally powderiness that I get particularly, I think I get that more on my skin. I think on the strip, the rum and the chocolatey notes kind of overpower the florals a little bit, but I do feel like I get more of those florals when I wear it on my skin as it warms up um, and definitely in the sillage cloud around me. And then in the base, there is cacao pod, vanilla, patchouli and benzoin. Yeah, this one, this one is really lovely. Okay, so next up we have Le Passon. I don't know, I'm really going to town with my attempts at French pronunciation, but I, it's kind of funny when you do that in a vacuum and you have absolutely no idea how they would actually pronounce it, but you just try to do it anyway. Interesting. 
All right, so Baptiste writes, Le Poissant means man passing by. It is the smell I remember from my father. My father used to wear a beautiful lavender fragrance and I have always worn lavenders. I wanted Orme to have one. He also had Papier d'Armagny in his pockets, which smells like benzoin. Le Poissant is really a beautiful lavender made smoother with vanilla, tonka, benzoin and ambrette. It's a certain idea of masculinity for me. So what did I write? <laughs> I don't think I had as many notes for this one. So I wrote that it smelled green, slight, which I could have been, it's possible that I was being psychologically influenced there because the packaging for Le Fosson is green. They're all, they're all different colors. Uh, so what did I say? I said it was, it, it was green, maybe a little bit camphorous, cooling, and then I wrote lavender. And then I said, it's like actual lavender oil, not the sweet, perfumey lavender. I think in my mind, when I was saying that, I was, once I picked up, once I realized that what I was smelling was lavender, and it is very much lavender, I think, where my mind was going was Mon Guerlain and how that is so sweet. Um, it is lavender, it does have a definite lavender element to it, but it is just so sweet as well. And in my mind, I think I was trying to delineate these two because this has a sweetness to it and you do get that vanilla smell, but it's not super, super sweet. There is a sweetness, but it's not crazy. And you definitely get spice as well. And there is an almondy element to it as well, but, but not creamy like some almond fragrances are. It's, it's really interesting. I, I like this. I still think it's a little bit green. So maybe it wasn't lavender. Maybe I was picking up on some green notes, but the lavender is just so natural. You know, it's got that really beautiful botanical feel to it which is so refreshing. And you might think that based on that description that, it, that this is very masculine, but I actually really think this is totally unisex. Even though, even based on his description, it was inspired by his father, which of course to him equates to being masculine. But this is so beautifully unisex. I think anyone could wear it and I would wear this. And I'm not you really a huge fan of lavender scents anyway, but I would, I would wear this. I love that botanical element to it that's got a real crispness. Mm, it's really nice. Let us review the notes. Okay, so in the top is lavender, tagette, tagettes, tagette, which I think is marigold. Uh, and bergamot and in the mid there's lavender and then in the base there's amorous tonka bean and vanilla mm, I do get the bergamot as well actually now that I think about it I probably should have picked that up maybe that's what I'm getting is green it's kind of zesty yes it's very very nice I like this a lot and it would be a lovely it's very fresh but it's not just a freshy because you've got that benzoin and vanilla and the tonka as well Oh yeah, nice. Very, very nice. Next up is Papier Carbon. Mm, okay, I think my I think my thoughts are changing on this, but let me let me just go through everything in order that I keep saying I'm gonna do it. Because if I mix up the order, then the whole video is gonna be a mess. Okay, so Baptiste writes, Papier Carbon is a work on memory. Papier Carbon means carbon copy. The paper that has a memory. Oh, I like that. I went to the same school as my mother and I wanted a scent that would remind me of that school. It's that idea of the wood of the library and of the paper of the books. I also loved licorice as a child. So there is badian in it, which I think is star anise. I Googled it, <laughs> which will remind you of licorice. Yes, it does. And it definitely has. Okay, so that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> Because in my mind, when I was just smelling it then, and I was looking, I, my, my eyes sort of went down to what I had written and I was like, oh, that's not what it smells like. So um, anyway, I'll read you what I wrote and then I guess I will explain. <laughs> 
what, it, what I think it smells like now. Okay, so I wrote candied dark fruit, like raisins and cherries, but not overly sweet. I queried whether I was getting woody notes, which obviously I was. There is also something that almost feels menthol -y or like that old cinnamon chewing gum that you used to get. And then I said, I think it's licorice or something like licorice. All right, so I wasn't too far off the mark. Um, I don't know if I get candied fruit now, but I do get, I mean, it does have a spiciness about it and there is a darkness to it as well. So yeah, I guess I can, maybe, I mean, I guess if I'm, if I'm sniffing it blind and I'm not <laughs> thinking about ha not having the notes in my head, maybe I would take the sweetness, a little bit of licorice, a bit of spice. Maybe that could relate back to dark candied fruit, but anyway, I mean, this isn't a test, you know, I, these were just my thoughts that I wrote down. So you definitely get the star anise in here, but it is really well done, I think. I mean, if you don't like the smell of licorice, you probably won't like the smell of this. I don't think I am a huge fan of licorice in perfume, but I think it kind of works really well in here because the star anise in here, I don't know, it sort of gives it a bit of a cooling element, I guess. But would licorice give a cooling element? I'm not sure. I mean, star anise, which is slightly different to licorice, isn't it? Um, it's not as sweet as you would imagine a licorice to be. I do, I feel like I'm getting, I, I described, I described something as menthol -y in here and I feel like I still get that. It's, it's on the tip of my memory. I recognize the scent and I don't think it's menthol because it's not that, it is a little bit cooling, but it's not like that iciness that you get from a menthol. Maybe it's just aromatic. I definitely recognize it. I, I actually really like this. There's something about this scent that, yeah, takes me back to my childhood. I mean, my father is a massive licorice fan. He used to love licorice. Well, he's Dutch. So he used to eat a lot of the salted licorice, which a lot of people hate. And I don't know if I like it either. Some days I think I hate it and then other times I'm completely obsessed with it. But he liked licorice in all forms, so he would always buy licorice. And so licorice for me is a very comforting scent. It's definitely embedded as a scent memory for me in my childhood. And I really, I really like this. All right, so let's have a look at the notes. Okay, so the top notes are star anise, bergamot, cardamom and coffee. Okay, so it is a little bit green. All right. And then the middle notes are clary sage. Right, that's, I think that's what I'm getting that I couldn't quite put my finger on. So, okay, no, that was gonna bug me. So I'm really glad we got that. So clary sage, lavender, nutmeg, and coriander in the mid. And then the base notes are ambrette, guyac wood, patchouli, and Haitian vetiver. I would say this is up there as being one of my favorites as well. I really, really like this. I'm just trying to decide whether I personally would wear this as a fragrance or whether I would just want to have this smell in my vicinity. And I'm going to have to pause for a moment because a bug has very inconveniently died on the floor over there. And in the last 10 minutes, a whole stream of ants have started to come in and they're carrying it away. So I have to go and clean that up immediately. Oh, the joys of living in the subtropics. Okay, so that was Papier Carbon. Next is Toi Toi Toi. I like saying that. I don't know what it means. I should Google it because, <laughs> or maybe he'll tell, he'll tell me. Oh yeah, okay, he has told me. I, again, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Is it meant to be Toi Toi Toi? or toi toi toi. I feel like I wanna to say toi. I feel like that sounds better. Baptiste says, toi 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 means good luck, as you know, in German. Did I know that? I do now. It's really the idea of getting into the Garnier opera with these beautiful woods, the incense and the wax. Yes, okay. This is really nice. I like this a lot. I wrote pepper and woody, very slightly smoky, like it's freshly cut wood, very clean, very elegant. It does, it really smells like super dry, freshly cut timber. 
maybe with a bit of polish on it as well, but mostly it's about the timber for me. Do I get smokiness? I don't know. I'm going to try and spray it on my skin because I'm just not, I, I didn't make any note. Oh, actually, no, I did say it's slightly smoky. So maybe I did try it on skin already. I know there's a lot of debate about whether there's any difference to spraying on paper versus spraying on skin. And I don't think that skin changes the perfume. I think certain elements might jump out more or less depending on how your skin behaves with it. But I think mostly it's about heat. Okay. Yeah, okay, you definitely get more smoky elements, more incense-y. I even sort of get that, a touch of that um, resinous frankincense element in here as well. I don't necessarily get that coming off the paper strip though. So on the paper, it seems very, very woody. There is just the slightest, slightest hint of sweetness. Not on first spray, I, you would think, no, just dry woods. I, I wasn't really detecting any sweetness at all. But now that it's sort of developed a little bit on the paper, I feel like, yeah, maybe just a hint, a hint of sweetness just to stop it from being too just wood, you know? Mm, that's very nice. I like that too. <laughs> I think this was, I think I also marked this as being one of my favorites. So I have a few favorites from this line. So in the top, there's black pepper and incense. In the mid is sandalwood, cedar, and patchouli. And in the base is vanilla, naga motha, which I also had to Google. And I don't know if I pronounced that right, but basically it's cypriol oil and vetiver. So I also made a note from my Googling <laughs> that nagamotha is also known as nut grass, but it's also known as cypriol. And it's said to be woody, earthy, and a little bit spicy and possibly balsamic. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, very nice. Like that a lot. Next up is one that I'm going to have to be very careful when I spray to not get it on me because this is one that, this is the only one in the line that I actually don't get along with at all. I can't smell it on the strip anymore. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay, so this is Marc Page or Marc, Marc Page. I don't know, I, I'm gonna say Page. Oh, Marc Page means bookmark in French. Marc Page, yeah, okay, got it. The fragrance is inspired by the leather bookmark my father used to carry when he traveled. Marc Page is the scent of the warm winds. It's the light playing with the shades of the terracotta. Mm. Okay. So I wrote, oof, animalic leathery oud. I said, I get aromatics, but I feel like the greener notes are drowned out. Maybe getting some florals and cedar as it dries down but the agar wood or oud is overpowering. Yeah, I still feel like that. It is a very interesting fragrance. Now that I'm, I think when I first smelled it, I think I, I might have only smelled this once or twice. And then when I revisit, I mean, I revisited the others several times, but I think this one, I maybe subjected myself to it once or twice. And then I went, <laughs> no, I'm not smelling that anymore. So, my thoughts on this one won't be as well developed. I do feel like I get more than just the oud, right? It's not just oud. It is quite leathery. I don't actually don't know. Maybe it's not the oud that's smelling like that. Maybe there's something else. It almost smells a little bit like rotting flowers as well, you know? So maybe there's, maybe it's a floral in here as well that's doing that. Maybe a little bit peppery. There is something sort of crisp about it like aromatic but it's so hard to get it because that those animalic kind of rotting flower notes in the top <laughs> I feel really mean saying that because when I read his description I feel like oh that's something that I would love and then I smell it and it's just it's just not how I'm imagining things to be at all I can you know now that I'm sitting here smelling it and now that I've read his description I feel like I can picture it. I can picture this bookmark, this leather bookmark kind of smelling like this a little bit. How interesting. The power of suggestion, hey? All right, so what are the notes? 
The top notes are incense, divana and artemisia. In the mid, there's orange blossom, jasmine, iris, leather and geranium. I think out of those, the only thing I feel like I'm getting is the leather. Ah, oh, that's not true. I mean, I, did, I do feel like I'm getting flowers, but again, it, it kind of feels like they're a bit rotting. And then in the base is amber, sandalwood, oud, cypriol, again, vetiver, patchouli, and cedar. Do you know what? I'm starting to get something that kind of smells a bit camphorous in here. It's definitely an interesting fragrance. I absolutely do not want to have it on my skin, but that's just me. And if you like those more animalic, woody, leathery kind of things, then maybe this might be for you. Do you know what it reminds me of? And again, this could be partly power of suggestion because I've read his description. It kind of reminds me of the smell of like a leather bound book that has glossy pages in it. And you know how sometimes those glossy pages have, it might be something to do with the coating that they have on them or, or maybe a plastic wrapping around the book that you have to take off before you get to the book. And it's, it's the plastic wrapping that has a smell. That's what it reminds me of. And maybe it's because maybe the plastic, if it's been sitting on the book for a long time, it, it maybe absorbs some of the smell from the leather and maybe mingles with some of those volatile organics that you know usually found in plastic. Interesting. It's super interesting. I, I kind of want to keep smelling it now, but I don't want to smell like it. <laughs> But I just want to, I want to keep smelling it to analyze it. It is super interesting. Anyway, okay, so that's that one. That is Marc Page. The next one is Le Brume. All right, so this one, I did Google that, by the way, <laughs> which is why it sounded so unnatural when I said it. So Baptiste writes, this is very much the idea of a walk in a citrus field in the morning. That sounds like my kind of fragrance. It's those beautiful citruses and you can smell the morning dew from the fruit onto the wood. For me, it's a super complex smell that seems simple, which makes it very sophisticated and very rive gauche. Rive gauche. Passable, maybe. All right, so I wrote that this is very citrusy. It's a very familiar citrus smell. I said quite a noticeable ginger note. It's quite green as well, but not grassy. More aromatic green with a herbal twist. It's very crisp and fragrant um, and reminds me of a herbal tea that's causing my mouth to water even though it doesn't smell gourmand. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's all those beautiful, zesty, crisp, citrusy notes that that do. I mean, even now my mouth is watering just because it just smells so delicious, like a really delicious, zesty, citrusy cocktail or something, you know? And that ginger gives it a little bit of kick, but it's quite subtle. Actually, I said it's really noticeable. Mm. Anyway, and yeah, it is, it is also quite herbal and aromatic as well. So it's, it's definitely a warm, it's definitely directed to being a warm weather scent, I think. Uh, so what are the notes? The top notes are ginger, lemon, mandarin, and bergamot. In the mid, you've got cardamom, sage, jasmine, and tuberose. Interesting, I'm not sure. Mm, I'm not sure if I detect any specific florals in this. I don't feel like I would pick it out as jasmine. Oh, well, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't pick it out as jasmine or tuberose. I didn't really talk about florals at all, in fact. I think the florals are quite subtle in here because there's, it's quite green and citrusy, so. And in the base, there is cedar, vetiver, mate, and sandalwood. Okay, so the mate might be what's giving it that tea vibe, which also could be attributing to that sort of crisp sort of bitterness that tea has that gets my mouth watering so mm, interesting mm. anyway really nice very refreshing if you like citrusy fragrances this might be one worth testing I quite I like it 
but I'm not sure that I would wear it necessarily. But then I don't tend to wear citrusy fragrances all that often anyway. So, all right. And then we are on to the last one, which I think this one is really popular. Um, I hear people talk about this one a lot. Okay, so this is called Yvonne. I also did spray this one on my hand earlier too. So I was just comparing the differences. Anyway, so let's, um, let's get Baptiste's background on this one. So Baptiste writes, all of our fragrances are unisex, but my mother had developed beautiful feminine fragrances. I really wanted her to work on a classic feminine, but with a modern twist to it. Yvonne is the name of my grandmother and she loves fragrances. She wears a lot. Yvonne was very much the idea of having the beautiful codes of classic feminine perfumery with patchouli and rose and bring modernity to it with red fruits and black currant. It really is a timeless fragrance. Okay, I can see why this one is so popular. It is lovely, but it's not my favorite. Um, okay, so what did I say? This opens really sweet and fruity and juicy. I definitely get something like a berry or, a, or a, and I think it might be black currant. It reminds me of a drink that I had as a child. As it dries down, the fruitiness blast tones back a little and I feel it becomes more rosy, woody and spicy. I don't necessarily detect strong woody notes, but I think they all work in unison to just round out the florals and the fruits. So when I first smelled this, I definitely thought this wouldn't be for me. Um, it is very fruity. So if you like your fruity florals, this is probably going to be your pick of the bunch. Um, I, I think for me, wearing a black currant note can be a little bit hard for me sometimes. I don't know why. But having said that, in the dry down, it is strangely alluring to me. So it's still fruity in the dry down, but obviously that's toned back a lot. And I, I, there's, I don't think there's any in here, but I feel like it's got an almost irisy element to it. I also feel like the patchouli to me was more stand out in the mid than in the dry down. But I do feel like I get more of those woody elements when it dries down. So overall for me, I would say this one probably does lean feminine just because it's so fruity and floral in the opening. But when it dries down, I think it actually starts to lean more unisex again. And it's very subtle. So I think anyone could still get away with wearing this. So the top notes are tagettes or marigold, blackcurrant, grapefruit, pepper tree and bergamot. In the mid, there is peach and rose and jasmine. Do you know what? Now that I read that, I think I do really get peach. Yeah, I think I do get the peachy notes. So it's not just berries. I just thought it was important to make that distinction. And then in the base, there's patchouli, vanilla, tonka bean, benzoin, and sandalwood. To me, this does really lean very fruity floral. And I, I don't think I get necessarily the spiciness that I would expect from a benzoin. But it's very nice. It's, it's nice, but it's not my favorite but I know that a lot of other people really like this. And when I posted on Instagram last week, I had quite a few people messaging me and commenting that Yvonne was their favorite. So it is clearly very popular. So, um, and so that's it, that's the eight. Overall, I would say that I am actually quite blown away by this house for the reason that these perfumes are all natural perfumes, but they don't smell like typical natural perfumes. They smell very refined. And if I hadn't learned that they were actually all naturals, I would have assumed that they were really high quality perfumes that with a mix of naturals and, and synthetics. So um, from that perspective, I think it's incredible. Uh, natural perfumes to me, or at least of the ones that I've smelled, um, they smell very natural. They smell of the earth. They smell um, a little bit rough around the edges, you know, um, and that's 
one of the things that I'm drawn to by those sorts of fragrances because I like that element in perfumery. I don't, I don't always want my perfume to smell too perfect and too clipped and too refined. So for me, that is a good thing. But I recognise that not everybody likes that sort of rough around the edges style of natural perfumery. And if you are one of those people and you're interested to learn what natural perfumery can smell like, then I highly encourage you to try and sample. Don't go blind buying anything, but just have a smell of these because they are not like any other natural perfumes I've ever smelled. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank the team at Orme Paris, particularly Inez, who corresponded with me over email and pulled together all the information that I asked for really quickly too. And she did her absolute best to try and tee up our schedules to try and have a call, which I really appreciate both from her and from Baptiste being, you know, being willing to do that. So um, that was very much appreciated. And so on that note, I'm going to go. I hope you are all having a wonderful week or weekend, depending on whenever this video goes up. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. But adding modern, modern, <laughs> modernity, modern, modernity.